Hi there, and welcome to today's episode of How the Game Was Won. For this episode, we're looking at the game between Rajabov and Gritschuk, played in the FIDE Grand Prix in Tbilisi. And for this game, it is a phenomenal, phenomenally powerful crushing of the poison pawn in the Nidorf. And without further ado, let's just whip through the first couple of moves of the game until we get to the first couple of key positions. And as you can see, we've got the classical type of Nidorf type of setup up to a6. Uh, with bishop g5, e6, f4, and this is where Rischak makes clear his intentions of wanting to play the poison pawn. Now what's interesting to note here is that this is the second poison pawn that Rajab Rajabov has been playing with in the two-day period. In the previous game, in the, in the exact same tournament, he was on the black side of a poison pawn, but it was within the French defense and not the Nidor. But who's counting these type of li little insignificant details? A poison pawn is a poison pawn. So obviously, with it being a poison pawn, the game would have continued with the queen d2, queen takes, rook b1, queen a3, e5, h6. Now, this move has become quite a bit more popular than, for instance, the option of uh, d takes e, which has also been played a couple of times. And one, what must be said is, as far as either the d takes e, or for that matter, uh, the h6 move as what was played in this game, both of these moves have still have an immense a number of possibilities for both sides that have definitely not been explored thoroughly as yet. So uh, this position with these two different uh, black moves, there's still a whole lot of opening theory still to be unearthed about this. But here the game continues with Bishop takes h4, d takes e5, F takes e5. Now, before I get to, onto the move that was uh, that was played, it might be useful to look at the types of options that um, Black had at his to his advantage or at his disposal. First and foremost, he could have played a knight on f3 to d7, or he could have played knight to d5, and these. Uh, and these are two different lines that lead to completely different positions. And part of the difficulty of playing these types of positions are that there are so many lines that if you need, wanting to be able to play the position um, to its utmost, you need to be able to play all of these different complex lines perfectly if you want to uh, make this a phenomenal part of your, of your repertoire. As is, the game score itself continued with the move of g5. Then, which led to uh, bishop g3, knight h5, knight e4, knight e7, rook b3, queen a2. Now, uh, many people uh, initially might be looking at the next move, White's next move of Bishop E2 as being a novelty. And I suppose to a certain extent you could call it a novelty because it hasn't been played at Grandmaster level before. However, the uh, it has popped up before, but it was played in a game between two players with a rating of less than 2,300. And so it probably went completely under the radar. But to Rajabov's credit, um, he probably was able to unearth that game between the lowly players, find the interesting move, study its possibilities uh, in a more intricate detail, and find something that's incredibly useful to uh, for him to be able to apply at 
um, Grandmaster level. And obviously, uh, Grishak had n not seen this movie, this uh, other lowly game before, and therefore could not, f uh, has obviously not analyzed it in his home preparation, and fell into a bit of an error here. What could have, uh, Grishak could have played in this position would have been, say, for instance, uh, queen takes a or queen, queen a one check with uh, bishop d one, uh, or for that matter, queen a one check with king f two with uh, knight g three, or as I said, with the queen, queen a one bishop d one that gives knight c five as an op option, and but it gives really 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 complex positions and. Uh, more practical tests at grandmaster level would most definitely, uh, most definitely be needed. But be that as it may, getting back to the game at hand, in this position, Grishchuk played knight to c5. And playing knight to c5 allowed Rajabov to come back with the powerful punch of knight c3. And in this position, there's the options at at Grishak's available uh, available to Grishak at the moment would be something like again Queen A one check, but now with Rook B one and um, and Rook B one really doesn't uh, work anymore because of the risk to the uh, a5 square once the, the, the knight moves again and what's more he's got an additional problem of the knight on h5 is completely hanging so um, that's a really serious consideration to be taken taken into account because not only has he got the uh, h5 hanging there's also the problem of the f6 square which is a really useful outburst for white to be able to get into and cause immense problems for uh, for blacks position. So in this situation, uh, after knight c3, Grishak um, took the exchange with knight xb3 and still part of home preparation, Rajabov came back with uh, knight b3. And as I mentioned before, Grishak was uh, completely out of his home preparation. He should have looked at something along the lines of knight takes g3 to be able to sort out that hanging piece with knight a2, knight h1, king f1, and although black will lose his knight on h1, it doesn't mean that the game is over. Black has got a couple of pawns and the pair of bishops, and what's more, it's going to be taking white two moves to be able to get that uh, Knight removed on a1, which gives some tempi for uh, black to be able to mobilize those two bishops of his into a stronger position. But instead of doing that, Grestjak here played bishop to b4, which is effectively the crucial and decisive mistake that sealed the, the victory for white. And here, the hanging piece drops at h5, and you've got queen b2 and white castles. Now, uh, black doesn't have the, the time to take on on c3. Um, which means that his position is totally lost because in this uh, 
he needs to maybe look at something along the lines of uh, castling bishop e1, queen, queen takes c3, queen takes c3, bishop takes c3, bishop takes c3, which uh, leaves white in a position with uh, two pieces for the rook and completely winning because the uh, there's no ways that black can stop the bishop getting to b4 which then in turn would be an immensely powerful line for the bishop heading all the way down to f8 at the back so as i mentioned in this position um white's got a completely winning position but instead of uh, instead of doing that uh Grishak's tried to take on um c3 straight away and all that meant was the bishop takes an f7 with check, means king a7, queen goes to f2, and in this situation, with the immense threat of the king coming up to f6 with check, it's, it's, you can see clearly that there is no way that black position will be able to last out for very much longer at all and in this position black played king to d7 and just before i get to the final moves of the, of the game itself let's, let's just look at an alternative line in this position for instance white could have played again queen to f6 with rook f8 bishop e1 Queen c4, bishop takes b4, queen takes b4, bishop takes e6, check, king c7, and the rook on f8 drops. Wonderful little combination, um, and which is obviously still also winning for, for white, most definitely. So, but in this position, Rajabov found queen b6 straight away and black played rook f8 and now Rajabov came along with bishop e1 threatening to uh, win the the bishop that's sitting on on b4 and what's more so white's going to be picking up the material and in addition to picking up the bishop and having the pair of bishops the immensely weak position of the black king means that you can see really clearly once the white bishop gets to that b4 square it's going to be controlling that a3 to f8 diagonal, which combined with the, the strong position of the, of the white queen up on b6, the, it's just going to be simply a matter, matter of time before black gets checkmated. And for that reason, in this position, Grishak resigned the game and as you can see by clearly by the strength of white's attack that is how the game was won post your comments and questions down below don't forget to share this out amongst your friends and also please if you like this type of commentary click the thumbs up button if you think this type of commentary is absolutely crap and you wanting me to make some drastic changes to how i'm putting the commentary together give the video a thumbs down as well uh, that way I've got a clear indication of what type of content to be putting out in the future. And last but by no means least, click the big red subscribe button down just below the bottom left hand corner of this little um, video screen in YouTube. That way you can stay subscribed to my channel for all of the new videos as I post them on a week to week basis. Stay carved up for the win out there. I'll be seeing you next time. Cheers.